Hey everyone, welcome back to the Push Forward Podcast. I'm your host, Alex. Today we're going to talk about the topic of time management. Now there's a hundreds of books, podcasts, videos, apps. There's an abundance of resources and information about time management. And everyone is trying to teach you their system, their way of doing it. Um, but at the end of the day, what you'll find is that it's always a combination of different things that you will craft with, with your schedule in mind. No one else has your schedule. No one else has your vision. No one else has your business, your employees, your customers. So there's really no way that one system, be it online or offline, can actually fit into your time management system. So let's start there. The fact that time management is something that is very, very personal. After all, we only have so much time on this earth, right? And as creators, we want to create more. We want to make more money, especially for those of you who are solopreneurs. You have to be so careful and really protect your time. And learning how to manage your time effectively to get more done without feeling overwhelmed is is got to be one of your top goals year in year out and i've been doing this for more than 20 years and i tell you i'm still learning better ways all the time it's like you constantly optimize kind of goes hand in hand with your age if you think about it right i'm talking about time management and then i say to you well i've used many different systems but ultimately every year i tweak it some things go more digital, other things go more on paper. And I try to in incorporate that into other areas of my life, whether that be with family or friends, uh, colleagues. And so time management doesn't always, your time management doesn't always coincide with other people in your circles, right? So it's really crucial that you get this right. But let's just start with some like really simple tips that can really help you manage your time better. So prioritizing your tasks to me is the most important from the time you wake up, right? Importance of knowing what needs immediate attention versus what can wait. Methods like the Eisenhower box for task prioritization works really well. There's also like a quadrant. There's lots of different little systems that you can use, but ultimately just on, on paper, it's prioritizing what what is most crucial and important for you to reach your you know short term and long term goals like what do you need to do today and sometimes it's just comes down to saying i have to make that call let me not procrastinate on this one particular project and then you just do it right having the ability to focus on something and and stay committed with it and have that discipline i find for myself is one of the hardest things. Um, using the Pomodoro technique, right? How to work in short focus bursts to increase productivity. That also works very well. I like to do that after I do some meditating. Setting specific goals. Most of you are familiar with the SMART goals technique, which is smart, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So having the deadlines can definitely boost your productivity. And most people work really well when they know there's a goalpost, right? And so that that this doesn't just apply to you. It applies to your team as well. If everyone is on the same page, moving at the same speed, guess what? You're going to get there by the due date, right? But it's important that you communicate that on a daily basis. My next one, I really love doing, especially when it comes to creative things. So for those of you who are creators, who are artists, musicians, time blocking is so important. The idea of dedicating blocks of your time to do similar tasks, right? And But specifically tasks that include that creativity, right? Really, really important. Eliminating distractions. This one goes without say. Common distractions for us solopreneurs are, you know, we're working from home, you're working at a cafe. And so it's really hard for you to focus on something when you're not in a space that can give you that kind of focus, right? And then apps, look, I'm not a big fan of apps because the, the, the fact is that the apps can actually suck you in further into spending more time on your smartphone. So for, for me, 
what has worked is to spend the least amount of time on my smartphone. Take emails, for example. I check my emails in the morning. I check my emails in the middle of the day and the afternoon. That's it. And I limit it to 30 minutes a day. And then when I have to write long responses for my emails, what I typically do is just call the person, right? I call them or I take the email offline, put them into my CRM, and then I write my response. And then obviously I respond the same day or the day after, but I don't like to spend a ton of time on email. And what happens when you're on your smartphone, if you're connected with people on WhatsApp, social media platforms, you've got people direct messaging you all day. It can be a huge distraction and makes it just really hard for you to do anything. So using technology wisely to me is important. You, you know, if you have an Android, look at the digital well-being and study your behavior because you might say, hey, I'm only on my smartphone for an hour a day. But if you look at the stats and the performance, you might find out that, oh boy, I'm actually on my phone three hours a day. But you weren't counting the fact that you are on YouTube searching for videos, right? Or the fact that you are on text or WhatsApp or whatever the other app you're using, right? So definitely look at the digital well-being to control that. I do that for my kids. I do that for myself. Take breaks and reset. Look, for me, for many years, I used to push so hard without breaks, no rest. But these days, I find it so important taking those breaks. It, it really improves the long-term productivity. Taking time out a few times during the day for five minutes, right? I, I drink some tea. I listen to some lo-fi music. And then I do a little meditation. It's like a reset, right? And I'll go outside and take a, take a deep breath that rest, it impacts your performance. And most importantly for us creators, our creativity. And then review and adapt. Regularly reviewing your time management strategies is crucial. You know, everyone on my team knows that I'm constantly looking at ways to improve productivity. So for me, I have to go back to what I did the previous week, the previous month, the previous year, and find out what happened there. You know, so looking back at that is important, whether it's on paper or whether it's a, a, you know, your notes on your smartphone or on your desktop. And then you jot it down and you say, okay, so I see where I wasted time last week. This week I need to improve. Here's how I'm going to improve, right? That's it for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you found this episode valuable. Until next time, keep pushing forward in your content game. 